Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 20 of my algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. I'm going to talk about roots. I'm going to talk about quadratic equations, discriminants, and a whole lot more. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the fundamental theorem of algebra states that any polynomial of degree n has n roots. So what exactly is a root? Well, a root is where the polynomial is equal to zero. And this is going to bring us back to what we talked about a couple videos ago called the degree of a polynomial. And the degree of a polynomial is just the highest exponent a variable in a polynomial is raised to. So let's review. A linear polynomial would be something like x plus 10. See? One exponent. And then you'd have a quadratic would be x squared plus 10. And a cubic, x to the third plus 10. And so forth and so on. So what this is saying is the degree n, here are the degrees that we have available to us, or at least what I have listed here on this screen. So depending upon the degree, that means that polynomial will have two points in which it equals zero. So let's go and run through a couple of examples here. And this would mean that a quadratic equation, of course, has two roots. So let's go and say x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Well, if we work this out, we see that x squared is equal to 4. And what does that mean? Well, that means that x is going to be equal to plus or minus 2. And of course, all quadratic equations have two roots because every single one of them is two degrees. And that's what you get whenever you have something like ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Now, if we know the roots, this also means that we know the factors. So in our a little example that we have here, we know the factors based off of this information right here, and that is x plus 2 and x minus 2. Both are going to be equal to 0. And we can come over here and graph this. So we could have something like negative 4 for that 0 point, and then it would be negative 3 and a positive 3. Both of these would be negative 2, negative t and positive 2, and then put in our last couple points. And then, of course, we could come in here and draw this graph if we would like to do so. Exactly like that, or roughly like that anyway. Now, the discriminant of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And what the discriminant tells us is how many of those roots will be real numbers. So if we go and we take the values of b, a, and c and plug them in here, and we get a positive value, what that tells us is that we will have two real roots. And I'm going to give you an example of every single one of these. If this comes back as a value of 0, that means we have a double root. And what that means is the solutions are equal. And an example of this would be something like x plus 4 and x plus 4 as our factors is equal to 0. And if it is negative, that means that there are no real number solutions. Or to put it another way, that means they are complex numbers. So let's come in here and calculate some discriminants. Let's say that we have 2 x squared minus 7x plus 3, and this is equal to 0. Well, we know that we can calculate the discriminant by going b squared minus 4ac, and we can just plug these values in. So this is going to be 7 squared minus 4 times 2 
times 3, and this is going to be equal to 49 minus 24, which is going to be equal to 25. So that tells us that we are going to have two real roots. And we can verify this by calculating the roots. So we'll say, two, well, I don't need to write this out again. I'm using this guy right here. So I'm going to go use our quadratic formula. So this is going to work out to be 7 plus or minus, and then we'll have 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. Does this look familiar? It should because that is what we're doing here. And you can see the exact same thing there. All right. So if we go and, oh, and this is going to be divided by 2a, of course, which is going to be equal to 4. And if we go and work this out, that's going to end up being 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 24 divided by 4. And if we work this out further, that means that x is going to be equal to both 7 plus square root of 25, which is going to be equal to 12 over 4, which is going to be equal to 3. And of course, this 4 right here comes from this 4 right there. So we get a value for x of 3, and our other value for x is going to be 7 minus square root of 25 again, which is going to be equal to 2 over 4, which is going to be equal to 1 half. And we can verify that's a real number, that's a real number. Now I'm going to calculate one in which we're going to get a negative number, which means that complex numbers are going to be involved with it. So let's go and get an example of that. Let's go x squared plus 2x plus 6 is equal to 0. And if we take the discriminant for this, that's going to work out to 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6, which equals 4 minus 24, or negative 20. Okay, so there is no real number solution. That's what a negative value tells us. I'll just say no real numbers, all right? And we can come in here and we can verify that. So I'm gonna say x is equal to, and quadratic formula, plus or minus, and this is going to be b squared minus 4ac. Get the square root of this, of course, and 2a. And then we can go and plug our values into this. And that's going to give us negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6. And divided by 2, which is going to be equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 20. And I think you can start to see here where the problem is coming in. And this is going to end up being negative 2 plus or minus square root. Here's our negative 1 times 4 times 5. Do our prime factorization, which we've covered in the past. And if we do that, we are going to be able to come in here and cancel this out and cancel this out, leaving just a negative 1 behind. And that, of course, means that we're going to have a value for x, which is going to be minus 1 plus 2i and the square root of 5. If you don't understand the i and all that stuff, look into the past in, uh, when I talk about complex numbers in this algebra tutorial. x, it's in the title, minus 1 minus 2i square root of 5. And that is what happens whenever we have a negative discriminant. And up next, I'm going to show you what happens whenever we have a zero discriminant. All right, so I want to find the discriminant of x squared plus 8x plus 16. And we're going to go x squared is the discriminant minus 4 times 1 times 6, this ends up being equal to 64 minus 64. That tells us that this is a double root. 
and it also tells us that we will only have one solution. And if we go and have x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. This is going to be equal to negative 8 plus or minus, come in here, 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16. What is that going to be equal to? 0, because that is exactly the same as the discriminant calculation that we just made right there. And this is going to be divided by 2, which is going to give us a value of negative 8. That whole plus and minus stuff that's right there is going to go away. Divided by 2 is equal to negative 4. And there you go, a whole bunch of information on discriminants and roots and the fundamental theorem of algebra and a whole bunch more. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about functions. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.